the uh, Merseyside derby that you did in the FA Cup a few years back um, and the Holgate and Firmino incident. Talk us through um, basically what was going on in your mind and how did you see that? <clears throat> yeah, I think this that incident probably for me highlights, um, and there were bits in there that I, I could have done much better, so I'm not going to say this is perfect refereeing by any stretch, but that highlights to me that probably 20% of being a successful referee at that level is the laws of the game knowing the laws and black and white getting decisions right the other 80 percent is how you manage situations and that situation came about Holgate's behind him it, it gives Firmino a push from my angle the push didn't look that big surprise when I saw it on tv actually it just looked like a little bit of a nudge and that momentum because he was running forward carried Firmino into the crowd I knew when Firmino jumped out and ran towards Holgate that it might be a little bit more but so my instinct was to run and get between the two players. I would never advise referees to do that. That's not best practice because you're putting yourself in, in potential danger there. I'm 6'2". I'm built quite big. And my natural reaction is just to get in the middle because, and again, on a Premier League game, how many times you see a, a Premier League player try to level another player? It doesn't happen that much. Sunday mornings, it can. Yeah. Um, so it's probably a safer environment to do that as a ref as well. I jumped in the middle. I put my head to this side, and you can see the photographs. I think Firmino's head is here, and I put my head there as I am stopped him. I have my microphone in this ear, so I'm listening to the information that my guys are giving me. In this ear, I'm right between the Liverpool and Everton fans, so that's a lot of noise in my right ear. Yeah. The next thing I know that Holgate spins me around my shoulder and says, did you hear what he said to me? And genuinely, I didn't hear. I knew something had been said to make him react like that. I genuinely didn't hear it. Um, at this stage, I'm made aware that there's a... Uh, a, a, an allegation of racism that's when you've got to keep a cool head as a ref because that had never happened to me before we knew the protocols you know we'd been through them as a group this is what happens if but then you're suddenly thrown in that situation in a Merseyside derby live on BBC you've got to you've got to gain the trust of the players quickly that you're going to deal with this properly my thought before that incident happened is yellow card for Holgate Yellow card for Firmino for his reaction, because it was aggressive. And we'll get on with the game. Suddenly this throws a new aspect into this. So I've got to manage that. So then it's a matter of calming down. I've got to, again, you can watch the video of it. I speak to Holgate and his captain, Phil, um, to Jagielka. I said to Jags, look, I haven't heard this allegation. I can't do anything about it right now. Um, but I need you to trust me. We'll speak after the game and we'll deal with it. If you want to go and deal with it yourself now, said this to Holgate, if you want to go and deal with this yourself and take this into your own hands, I can't stop you doing it. But you end up with a red card, that doesn't help your team. Yeah. So you have to trust me. Just trust me that I'll, I will deal with this after. I can't change anything now. And to be fair, he, he was good. He, he, didn't, he didn't do anything. He didn't want to take that into his own hands. Um, I went and I spoke to my fourth official, who was John Moss. The commentary on the television says, oh, he's gone to ask John Moss whether he's seen anything about the push. At that stage, mate, I wasn't interested in the push. I wasn't interested yeah. because there's a much bigger thing to deal with. The protocol is that you speak to your fourth official, you make them aware because they can make a full written record of exactly what's said at the time. You're not then thinking back after the game, or oh, did he say this? What happened? Was that Holgate or was it? So you say it straight away to your fourth official, this is what's happened. They make a note, they make both managers aware of the incident. And this is the first half. <laughs> you know, we've still got to come back <laughs> to the second half. And I went back and the commentators are saying, I can't believe he's not giving anything to the players. At that stage, what good is two yellow cards? A yellow card, um, Firmino, people go, what, he's got a yellow card because he got pushed into the stand and he's got a yellow for it. A yellow card, Holgate, he's going to go bang because he's thinking, wait a minute, I've got a yellow card here and, and he thinks he's, he feels he's been racially abused. So at that stage, control again, control again. Yellow yeah. cards and yellow card has to mean something. It's got to help you to control the cards. What's the point in throwing one out if it doesn't mean anything? So in that situation, I, I've said to both players, we're not going to yellow card. We're just going to get on with the games. But to captains, to Milner and Jagielka, let's you know, let, let's play football and let me deal with it properly after the game. And it was done properly. You know, it's it's a tough situation to be in. Yeah. But as I said, I think eighty percent of being a top referee is that's a top referee. That, that sounded really big, Adam. I didn't mean that. Instead <laughs> of being an elite referee, not necessarily a top one, as I proved, um, of being an elite referee at that level, um, I think 80% is management and 
and staying calm enough to think, right, is there a prescribed way of doing this? Does it have to be two yellows? Or can I use a bit of personality and can I use a bit of empathy and understanding and manage this to make sure that all the players are safe? Nice short answer for you there, mate. Yeah, <laughs> cheers. Bye.